So you're thinking about moving to Ferndale. Well, in this video, I'm gonna show you around Ferndale, Washington and introduce you to three different neighborhoods, showing you three different homes and different price points to help you better understand what might fit your budget. And if you stick around to the end, I'll provide a brief overview of Ferndale in a way that will help you to better understand if this might be the right place for you. We're gonna get started right now. Hey, if this is your first time to the channel, we encourage you to subscribe and hit the bell for notifications so you can be the first to know when we release new videos about Ferndale, about Bellingham, about Whatcom County, uh, and all the great things that are going on here in the area. My name is Jeff Ingen. I'm with MJB Real Estate Group here in Bellingham, and we get calls, texts, and emails every day from people just like you who are considering a move to the Pacific Northwest, and we absolutely love it. So whether you're thinking about moving tomorrow, 10 months from now, or sometime in between, I uh, encourage you to reach out. All of our contact information can be found in the description below uh, and we're standing by and ready to help. But without further ado, let's go explore Ferndale. All right, well, good morning. We're here at stop number one, which is 5919 Vista Drive in Ferndale, Washington. Uh, the house behind me here, it's a four bedroom, one and three quarter bath, 1,754 square feet, built in 1978, and it's on a quarter acre lot. Uh, this is currently offered at 479. If you pull this up online and look through the photos, you're going to find that uh, the upstairs portion of the home is in finished condition. It's move-in ready, whereas the lower level of the home is kind of what I would call like a mid-remodel state. So um, to some degree, you've got, um, you know, stripped all the way down to the framing and there's, there's some work to be done. So at 479, uh, this is a little bit low. You're also going to see the listed square footage at 900 some odd square feet. Uh, that's going to be the finished square footage. So there's going to be an opportunity for you to add uh, some value to make it your own um, and to get into a great home and a great location here in mid Ferndale at 479. We'll come out and pan the street real quick. And um, so Vista Drive is one of the main throughways that's going to go from uh, kind of from town. Uh, so your, your downtown area your restaurants, your grocery store, your pharmacy, all that good stuff, and take you up to the top of Vista um, where you're gonna have uh, really just neighborhoods, right? Um, this is a great location based on schools. This is walking distance to Vista Middle School, which is just up at the top of the hill here, and it is walking distance from Ferndale High School, which is just down the street in the other direction. So if you have kids, you're looking for that good um, central location here within Ferndale, close proximity to schools, in this entry level price point, this would be a great place to start. Hey, let's head over to, uh, to house number two. All right, so here we are at stop number two. This is 4095 Susha Drive in Ferndale. And uh, if you're paying close attention, you might notice that we're standing at the back of the house as opposed to the front where we normally are. Well, I'm gonna go ahead and pan around and show you exactly why that is. And there you have it. So Sandy Point community of Ferndale. Uh, this puts you immediately on the water depending on where you are in the neighborhood. Um, some homes are built on, for lack of a better term, a canal. So you've actually got a dock and your boat uh, just walk out access from your front or back door uh, versus this is going to be unobstructed views um, on the bay. And of course, as you can see, no dock behind me here, but fear not, there is a marina here uh, at Sandy Point as well as a golf course here at Sandy Point. And so some great um, attributes here, um, great features within this community. Um, we're looking down to the south behind me now towards Lummi Island and the San Juan Islands, and then panning back the other direction and we'll actually be looking north up towards Canada, uh, the coastal rocky uh, Canadian mountain range. And uh, regardless of which direction you look, it's, it's absolutely beautiful. So panning back to the house here, this is a three bed, two bath house, 1,534 square feet that was built in 1976. And um, you can pull the photos up online. Uh, this is a phenomenal community. So if you're looking for something that's a little bit unique, a little bit different, closer to the beach, giving you access to things like crabbing, fishing, boating, um, all either from your back door or perhaps uh, a short drive down the road to that marina, uh, then this just might be the spot for you. This home is currently listed at 725 and uh, there is 
uh, optional participation in a couple different HOAs, mandatory participation in, in some others uh, that'll have some additional costs and expenses for you. But, um, but at 725 with these views, this is a fantastic spot. And uh, again, one of the unique areas of Ferndale that you might not come across uh, if you're just simply looking on the map and, and searching homes kind of in the core neighborhoods. So hope this is helpful. Let's move on to spot number three. All right, well, here we are at stop number three. This is 5937 April Lane here in Ferndale. And this is located in a neighborhood called The Meadows. Uh, the Meadows is a relatively new neighborhood. It's probably five some odd six years old. Uh, community of about 150 homes. Um, nice trail system that kind of runs through the neighborhood and it is located right on the fringe of it's basically the last thing in Ferndale city limits so uh, annexed into the city when it was developed but if you leave this neighborhood and turn left you're immediately in the county uh, surrounded by acreage parcels um, some different farmland some great stuff like that so this home is brand new was just built in 2022 it is a four bed four bath 3500 square foot and change home. Uh, it's on a quarter acre lot, which is quite large for this neighborhood. And they've gone uh, really top end uh, finishes on this home. So this has three car garage, epoxy floors in that garage with a car charger. This has uh, solar panels on the roof. This has a security system, a sprinkler system. It comes with a heat pump. So it's giving you that uh, hot air in the winter months and cold air in the summer months um, and just really nice quality finishes to it. This is located at the back of the neighborhood. Uh, so very quiet, very little traffic. We'll kind of pan around. You'll see that behind me here dead ends into a cul-de-sac um, neighbor across the street. And then as I pan back around this road behind me here, dead ends uh, just here off to the left. So great location. We talked about schools uh, for, for video number one. This is actually also proximity to uh, the neighboring elementary and middle school uh, that serves this surrounding area. So very convenient in that regard as well. So here you have it. We've seen three homes, three different price points. Uh, as promised, let's go back to the office and have a quick chat about the unique value proposition of Ferndale and helping you better understand if that might be the right spot for you. All right, so back in my office and as promised, we're gonna do a brief overview of Ferndale. Now, if you've watched any of my other videos, whether that's on Blaine, Linden, Bellingham, Whatcom County as a whole, there's of course going to be a little bit of information here that's redundant uh, with things like weather, for example, because it is relatively uniform uh, throughout this county. But let's start with location. So Ferndale is located about 100 miles north of Seattle. It's about 10 miles north of Bellingham, which is the biggest city uh, here in Whatcom County, and uh, about 40 miles south of Vancouver, BC. Now to travel down to Seattle might take you as little as an hour and 30, hour and 45 minutes. It might take you as much as two and a half, maybe even three hours, depending on traffic, depending on accessibility to carpool lanes. And so uh, going north to Vancouver, which is not all that far as the, uh, the crow flies, but you do have a, an international border to cross, which can be uh, backed up with long wait times. And so that trip out of Ferndale could be as little as an hour and change. Uh, it could be as much as, again, similar to Seattle, like it could be a two and a half, three some odd hour endeavor. And so always encourage you to take a look at the app on your phone, whatever directions app you like to use when you're leaving the Ferndale area to get a better sense of what your travel time is going to look like. It's going to vary depending on time of day, season, uh, you know, summertime, we get a lot of road construction, border crossing times, all that good stuff. But all of that said, being anywhere from, you know, that hour to three hours, let's call it, from those major cities is fantastic and affords you this opportunity to live in this phenomenally quiet, uh, comfortable place with still having access to the amenities that you'll find in bigger cities, but not dealing with the things like traffic that you will deal with in other cities. Now, population size. Population is a little bit tricky. Uh, if you look up the numbers as of the census, it's going to be approximately 15,000 people. But that does not include the unincorporated areas, the county areas of Ferndale. So all told, there's approximately 30,000 people that are going to live in the Ferndale area, uh, inclusive of addresses that will be in Ferndale, but not technically inside the city limits. Compare and contrast to Bellingham, population of about 90,000. Um, and all in for Whatcom County as a whole is approximately 225,000. So ranking of cities in terms of population, Bellingham the biggest, 
Ferndale, uh, the number two spot, again, with that 15, some odd 30,000 people, depending on how you look at it. Uh, Linden proper, around 15,000 and change as well. Uh, and then Blaine is gonna be significantly smaller with, uh, rather smaller than that. Um, so very comfortable in Ferndale. And Ferndale is oftentimes treated as an extension of, of Bellingham. There are a lot of people who live in Ferndale, but they uh, commute down to Bellingham for, uh, for work. Uh, it is pretty quick and pretty easy, depending on where you live in Ferndale, to get down to Bellingham. You could call it 20 minutes, give or take, depending on where you're headed. And there are some freeway improvement projects that are unfolding as we speak, making pretty good progress that will actually allow uh, some of the folks that are coming from kind of northwest Ferndale up on the hill to more quickly access I-5, and it will shorten that trip up coming down to, uh, to Bellingham. Okay, so the next thing we wanna talk about is weather. And if you live outside of the area, you probably have some preconceived notions. You've probably heard some things about the gray and the rain and the drizzle and, uh, and all that goes on uh, here in the Pacific Northwest. And to some degree, that's true, although it is dependent upon the time of year. So to, to try and quantify what that actually looks like, uh, as opposed to, um, letting you continue with this perception of just perpetual rain, I uh, want to share that we have approximately 157 days of sun in the Ferndale, Whatcom County area. And we have approximately 157 some odd days of precipitation. And then those other days that are not accounted for of the total 365 are, uh, are maybe just gray uh, without any of that rain. So 50-50 sun to rain, give or take, and um, the total precipitation that we receive annually on average is 39 inches. Now, this is comparative to a national average of 38 inches, so really not a big difference there. But where I do think there's a big difference is in that when it rains in Ferndale, Bellingham, Whatcom County, it's very unusual for you to see people walking around with umbrellas. In fact, there's a joke, you know, that, that if you see somebody with an umbrella, they're probably a tourist because uh, it's just not that big of a deal and it's just something that we've, we've learned to, to live with and incorporate into our existence. And so uh, when it rains, it's very rare that it's just a torrential downpour and, and particularly if you're, you know, even down in Phoenix, for example, you get these flash floods when these monsoons roll in. Well, that's not really the case here. So those 157 some odd days of precipitation uh, are maybe much more significant than you would get in other parts of the country, the Midwest, the Northeast, and otherwise. Uh, and so it's just kind of drawn out, strung out, uh, but it's relatively mild. It's a drizzle, it's not a downpour. Um, those 157 days of sun are typically phenomenal. Uh, in the summer months, which is where we are now as I record this video, we get as much as 16 hours of daylight, of sunlight in a day, which is incredible. Um, sun coming up at five something in the morning, sun going down at nine something at night. It's fantastic. Now in the winter months, uh, we get as little as eight and a half hours uh, of daylight per day. And so that can put you in a situation where you might be getting up uh, in the morning and going to work in the dark. And unfortunately you might be getting off work and coming home also in the dark. Now it's, it's a relatively short period of time that that's the case, but, but it is the case. Uh, the average temperatures here in the Pacific Northwest are fairly mild. Here in the Ferndale area, we get an average summer temperature uh, of 72 degrees, uh, average high temperature of 72 degrees, and we get an average low temperature of approximately 34 degrees. So all things considered, relatively mild. Now we do certainly get days that are warmer than that 72 and, and colder than that 34 but generally speaking, that's where things fall. So if you feel like you can deal with a little bit of rain, I'll tell you what, we definitely make up for it in the summer months with those long sunshine filled days, relatively mild temperatures, relatively low humidity. The next thing that I wanna talk about is, uh, is earning potential here in the Ferndale area. Now, uh, reports online indicate that the average household income in the Ferndale area is approximately $73,000 per year. Uh, now there are certainly outliers uh, to that, there's, there's those that would fall significantly below and those that would fall significantly above. Of course, that's why we call it an average. So average earning $73,000 per year per household. And I would say if you're looking for uh, employment opportunities uh, and, and if you're considering a move to Ferndale specifically from outside the area, there's a good chance that you might be uh, employed by uh, one of the two refineries that we have here. So 
uh, the Cherry Point Refinery or the Phillips uh, 66 Refinery, which are both located here in the Ferndale area. If that happens to be you, would love to, uh, to help you better understand some of the neighborhoods that'll put you in close proximity uh, and make that commute really, uh, really quick and simple. With tech uh, and now post COVID and, and work from home, all these things that are going on, there's of course people that uh, are, are living in this area who work for companies uh, out of the state, maybe even out of the country. And so we've been afforded a lot more flexibility with regards to jobs, the economy, uh, by way of this, this new work from home situation. So if that's you, uh, perhaps you, you work from California or Seattle or someplace further away, but, but you can enjoy the benefits of living here uh, in the Northwest. Last but not least, want to touch on recreation. The recreation here in the Pacific Northwest is, uh, is incredible. Uh, we have a lot of mountains. We have a lot of water. That's fresh water. That's salt water. Uh, we have thousands of miles of trails. Uh, and all of those things are true here of the Whatcom County area. Now, specifically in Ferndale, uh, there are a number of parks. There is the Nooksack River uh, that runs right through Ferndale, uh, right through downtown, actually. And so there are great opportunities for, um, for some outdoor activities, uh, particularly if you, you wanna cycle, uh, you know, um, uh, road cycling, if you wanna go on uh, you know, walks, runs, all that good stuff. We've got some beautiful parks and areas for you to take advantage of that. Um, if you wanna get up to Mount Baker, which is a short distance away, uh, you've got world-class skiing and snowboarding. If you wanna go down to Bellingham to Galbraith Mountain, you've got world-class mountain biking. Um, if you're going to uh, Bellingham Bay or any of the river systems here in the area. There's fantastic opportunities for boating, for crabbing, for fishing, um, and, and just a tremendous amount of things for you to do and enjoy the outdoors here in the Pacific Northwest. And really, for most of us who live here, uh, we're taking advantage of these things year round, right? A little bit of rain isn't going to keep us from going out and, uh, and taking advantage of the beauty and the, uh, the opportunity that we have for uh, for the great outdoors. So if all those things sound to you like they could be agreeable, you can deal with a little bit of rain in exchange for the phenomenal summers, the mild temperatures, um, the great accessibility to these bigger cities without all of the, the fuss and headache that's associated with living in these bigger cities. Well, then Ferndale just might be the right spot for you. One last time, I want to encourage you to like, subscribe, and hit the bell for notifications. We are producing content on a weekly basis and would love for you to keep up with us uh, and keep up with all the great things that are going on here in Ferndale, Bellingham, and Whatcom County as a whole. Uh, again, all of my contact information can be found below. If you have questions about real estate, if you have questions about the area, I would love to be of help to you in any way that I can. I encourage you to reach out. I really appreciate your time. Thanks so much for being here. I look forward to seeing you again soon.